Alrighty then. Let's get to it. What do we got? Eight in parallel, 14 in series. Need two bus bars here, and this baby will be done. But, these cells are only good for about 2.75 amps. 2.75 times eight. That's 22 amps. That's the max that these things really want to take. And my e-bike can handle about 28 amps. If I went with eight in parallel, each cell would be required to give 3.5 amps at 28 amps. If I go with 10 in parallel, each cell would be required to give out 2.8 amps when 28 amps are required. They can handle 2.3 if I add two more all the way down. All these in this bag are even within, let's see, let's look. This is what I'm seeing. Um, you can see the divergence. This is the divergence from the packs. This one's a divergence of eight. That's quite a bit. This one's six. But I mean, you know, there's not many to choose from. It's not too bad. So that's what we got. So these are set up so they're all, each one of these bags are even Stevens, just like I set up these even Stevens. So now, like these next two, they can go anywhere. They just got to stick together on the same row. I can put them on any one of these rows. They just got to stay together. All right, what are we doing? We need to plug in this hot glue gun. Let's look for some music to, for the background. Let's go YouTube. I can't see what that thing. Oh shit, why did I just close off? I can't see. If you're wondering about those bus bars, they're made by k &S Engineering. I get them at my local Fleet Farm store. They're in the aisle that has like the angle iron and stuff like that. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Ten by fourteen. One hundred forty cells in this heavy lug. And I gotta finish gluing it. And I got these strips. This is where you gotta be careful, like me flagging this or all these batteries like that. <laughs> it's probably cringing the hell out of some people. Sparks could be flying so easily. Sparks could be flying so easily. No effing around, quite frankly. I just want to see it in person. See if these smaller cells act like a weak link. Or will these bigger ones keep them afloat? Which, let's see which way you know, maybe it's uh, it's more than likely just being a common sense type of person. I just say it's probably halfway between, right, right in the middle. So a little bit of each. Probably doesn't make that big of a difference, and they will be lifted by these. But it probably will make a difference. I don't think it'll be enough to really be any big problem. This is just a homemade pack. I don't have much money into this pack. This is just an experimental one. So, ooh, rock on. This is supposed to be rock, I guess. I'm gonna check it again here in a second. This is what I'm gonna use. I want you guys to let me know what you think of this stuff, if it's any good. Yeah, that's what I'm using. It was lower temperature than the other stuff, and I thought lower temperature better, so that's what I got. It lined up good. Alright, so good, last chance. That's fine. Is this thing cranked? No, it's not. No wonder. I gotta let, I gotta let it heat up. When that thing heats up, it'll be like nothing. Oh, okay. We don't need that right now, we need this. Should be fully heated, ready to rock. 
home. It's like butter now. Sisters, them tabs. I don't even need to clean. I don't even need to sand them. Clean them. They're just ready to go, man. All right, here I am attaching the last little section of bus bar, and the solder gun I'm using is a 60 watt solder gun I bought off of Amazon about eight months ago. I'll throw up a link in the description, but you want to use a good solder gun because you want to be on and off those batteries real quick before they get hot see how I'm cooling them down right away the positive sides are always a lot easier to do than the negative sides but if you've got a solder gun and you're sitting on there for more than three seconds that's too long you need to get a higher wattage solder gun after this, I'm going to be moving on to the BMS, getting that wired up, and then working on getting it padded and ready for a box that I need to make, probably out of wood. This wire I'm using is from 1 ohm resistors, and they're good for about 6 amps before they start melting. So you wouldn't want to use it on anything smaller than say a battery like this. If you had a pack with four in parallel or five in parallel, I would not use this wire. It's just too thin and you're going to start melting them. Okay, here I'm just trying to decide where I want to put this BMS. Um, for my wire, I'm using 12 gauge wire. I'm going to be using that for the positive and the negative. I know for the charging wire you could go with a little bit less, you could probably use 14 gauge. But I'm going to charge straight from the wire that connects to my controllers, so I'm, I don't need that at all. Um, I'm just going to get this piece cut out to fit over the top because this is where I've decided that I'm going to put this BMS. And I'm just using a hot glue gun to put it down. looks good that's what I like to see now it depends on your BMS some BMS's are a two wire BMS some are a three wire BMS this BMS right here I got off of eBay it costed me $33.60 and the shipping was free I will put a link to this BMS but a lot of people want the three wire BMS but this one will work just fine. There's nothing wrong with a two wire BMS. It's a 45 amp continuous BMS with a peak of 150 amp. I wouldn't go at 150 amp for very long though. It can be used for a motor up to 1500 watts is what it says. And it's for a 14S. They say you can use it for a 13S by leaving the last wire disconnected, but that doesn't sound right to me. I wouldn't do that. So on this BMS, there's going to be a B negative spot and a C negative spot for the 12 gauge wires to hook up to. Now the C negative spot is going to be for the charging and discharging negative wire. And the B minus wire is going to go to the last negative parallel group. So with the BMS, all that goes to it are the negative wires. Okay, here I'm looking to attach that B negative wire and I'm trying to attach it in three different spots just to get a more even flow. Uh, there are two wires but they're both going to the same spot on the BMS. Once again I want to try and cool that solder off as quick as possible and I'm trying to attach them in between the cells to keep the least amount of heat going to the cells as possible. This is being a little bit tricky because like I say, you know, you're using 12 gauge wire. With 12 gauge wire, it's just tougher. That's why you have to have a hot solder iron. All right, now I'm hooking up the BMS discharge wires. 
to the bus boards. These are the wires that will be doing the discharging if one parallel row gets too far ahead of the other one or two or three. It just keeps them back down. So if one row is already at 4.15, 4.18 and the other rows aren't there yet, it's going to bleed current away from them to keep them from getting overcharged. These are pretty fun wires to solder. They solder really easy. It's starting to look like something now. I'm not giving a very detailed explanation of how I'm doing this. There are videos out there that explain this much better than me and one person where I learn a lot from is Micah. He has a channel on YouTube called ebikeschool.com. I'll put a link to that down in the description as well. But he is who I learn basically everything from. Okay, now that I'm all done getting everything wired up, I just need to finish putting some of this thin foam around it. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I got this thin foam at Ben Franklin. You can get it at any craft store, I'm sure. Hobby Lobby would have it too. It's like a foam, a real thin one mil foam. And I'm just going to hot glue it down around the sides over these wires and then eventually on the face. Alright, it's time to solder one last wire before I forget. I need to get the positive wire hooked up. Just like the negative wire, I'm going to solder it in three locations so it can spread out the flow just like the negative wire. Looking back, I probably should have not just put that solder on the bus bar like that. It just kind of lumped it up and made it more difficult. If I had to do it over again, I would just hold the wire down with some tape and just go straight to solder and not put any solder on the bus bar beforehand. Alright, one last thing I'm going to do is just check the voltage just to make sure everything's working out. I'm sure it is. I don't see any problems. I've checked all my fuse wires to make sure there isn't any of those that are broken up. I want to be very careful with these lead wires. After I get done, I will be putting tape over the ends of them real good to make sure they can't touch or ground out on anything. There should be over 50 volts here. 53.7 volts. That's looking good. Turned out real good, guys. Takes a while, but it's a lot of fun. It's rewarding, I'll tell you. I want to thank everybody for watching this video. Give a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you want to see more. I will be making the battery for the uh, Super 73 Z1 coming up next. I had to order some more cells because... I've got another little project in the works. I shouldn't really say what's up next because I'm not totally sure. It's either going to be starting to assemble the Z1 battery or it's going to be expanding the 13 amp battery on my juiced bike scrambler. But anyway, thanks for watching the video guys and I'll see you in the next one.